Good morning, children. Today in English, in class 11, we continue the chapter, We are not afraid to die, if we can all be together. Now here we will see how the children are so bold, even though they realize that is a, it is a very critical situation, but they comfort their parents and tell them not to worry. When I went in to comfort the children, John asked, Daddy, are we going to die? Now, the father had come here to comfort the children, to assure the children and tell them not to worry, that they, they will all survive. But before he could say anything, the son questioned his father directly, that are we going to die? I tried to assure him that we could make it. I tried to comfort him. I tried to assure him that he need not un worry about anything at all, that they will all make it. Make it means that they will all survive. But daddy, he went on. He did not wait for his father to respond. He went on, We aren't afraid of dying. If we can all be together, you and mummy, Sue and I, that is a family, as a family when they were together, it did not really matter whether they survived or they all perished. He knows very well that his father has tried his level best and is still hoping and is still optimistic that things will work out, but he is assuring the father not to worry that they are, even though they are small children, but they are not afraid because they are all together. I could find no words with which to respond. He says, I was speechless. I had nothing to respond. I had nothing to say. I had nothing to tell that little boy. But I left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything I had. So he says that I came out of that room but I was determined, I had resolved to fight the sea. That meant that to face the challenge and to fight back, even though the conditions were adverse, but even then, with everything I had, with all his energy, with all his power, in order to, to save everybody's life. To protect the weakened starboard side. Starboard side was the right side which was uh, where the damage had mainly been caused. I decided to heave to. Heave means to lift or drag some, uh, something with a lot of effort. The undamaged port hull, that means the part of the ship which was less, uh, lesser damaged, he tried to face that towards the waves so that as the waves came and uh, there would not be more damage which has already been caused earlier. Using an improvised sea anchor. Using means utilizing. Improvised, mean, all their spares had been lost. But whatever that remained with them, with that help, he made this anchor. So he says, of heavy nylon rope and two, 22 liter plastic barrels of paraffin. So that is, it was improvised. That means whatever material that they had with them, that is what he tried to utilize and face the challenge. That evening, Mary and I sat together holding hands. As the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks. Whatever that could be done, again he did that. But both of them, that is the husband and wife, that is the narrator and his wife Mary, they sat holding hands together and seeing that with every wave that hit against the boat, more water was collecting inside the, bro inside the boat, sorry, because the planks were broken. Planks are those, uh, one can say, the long flat piece of timber. So those had been broken. So from there, naturally, the water was entering the boat. We both felt the end was very near. Now, that was a weak moment. Both of them, we both felt they realized, they became conscious that the end was very near. The end was very near. That meant that the boat will not stay on for a long time, that it is definitely going to sink and all of them will uh, die. But Wave Walker rode out the storm and by the morning of January 6th, with the wind easing, I tried to get a reading on the sextant. But like we say, miracles happen. But Wave Walker rode out the storm and by the morning of January 6th, that is the next morning, with the wind easing, that means slowing down, I tried to get a reading 
uh, with the sextant that the sextant is an instrument an instrument with the help of which one can measure angles and distance for calculating the position of a ship back in the chart room i worked on with speeds and he went to the chart room where the maps and all are there to reschedule and plan to make a strategy and try to survive and try to save everybody's life so i worked on wind speeds changes of course drift and current in an effort to calculate our position so he used the sextant and he worked out the speed at which the wind was blowing and how they could calculate so that they would be able to reach that island safely the best i could determine so what he found out was that we were somewhere in 150000 kilometers of ocean looking for a 65 kilometer wide island it was a huge challenge it was not easy it was a pin prick in the vast ocean like he says the he found out from his on the basis of the calculations that the in that ocean that was 150000 kilometers in that they are trying to reach an island in amsterdam that is barely 65 km only it was a difficult task but not impossible but he did not give up he carried on making an effort and undertook ways and means of how things could work out while i was thinking while he was contemplating so moving painfully joined me and while all these thoughts after he had calculated and was working on what could be possibly done his daughter who was in a lot of pain because she had a lot of injuries she had a bumped head also the left side of her head was now very swollen and now uh, the, the swelling wherever she had injuries now there was also swelling and she was in a lot of pain and her blackened eyes narrowed to slits that they're swollen up now she gave me a card she had made she came here to comfort the the father and what had she brought along with her, uh, her that she had brought a card which she had made herself on the front she had drawn caricatures caricature now caricature is actually a picture in which uh, a person's distinctive features are exaggerated for making it funny or amusing so she had drawn the caricatures of uh, the parents and on that the words here are some funny people she did not make uh, seem to make fun of her parents but she was just trying to cheer them up she was trying to lift their spirits here are some funny people that meant that her life had been so very enjoyable did they make you laugh i laughed a lot as well that meant that the parents had made uh, the the life so enjoyable and that is the reason what she had come here for to thank her parents she, and that to thank for everything that they uh, have done for the children and she has had such a happy time inside was a message oh how i love you both and she expressed her gratitude and her deep love and affection for her parents so this was a card an effort of a child who is 7 years old susan made that, that card with the caricatures and drew the message that she loved them both and that their life had been so very uh, fun full of fun and happiness so this card is to say thank you that is to express the gratitude for all that they have done till now and let's hope for the best even though now that things seem to be so terribly wrong she was still hopeful she was still optimistic she had not given up she had implicit faith and trust in her father and she knew that come what may he will save their lives so she uh, was trying to cheer him up and lift his spirits and even now encouraged him deeply to hope for the best to be optimistic to be confident and continue to make an effort which he already was doing somehow we had to make it that meant seeing this card uh, hearing the words of the little boy jo uh, jonathan the brave words that we are not afraid to die and the card the beautifully made card by susan really encouraged him and somehow or the other he resolved to do something or the other to save their lives thank you